um, it is very obvious that I don't need to spend a lot of time talking about how important principles are. We would not be sitting in this room if that, if that case had not already been made. And I want to commend you for taking this effort so seriously because it is a very serious effort because right now we are really in a crisis mode. We just did a major survey of all of our principals. We had over almost 1,900 respondents. And folks, there's a lot of dissatisfaction out in the field. Um, we had 180 pages of comments. That is how much dissatisfaction there is out in the field about their compensation. As Brenda said, as we all know, principals are not a self-serving group. They do not advocate for themselves as a rule. They are always advocating for their teachers. Um, what I'm going to offer you today is um, a way, Senator Tillman, that you might want to consider bringing all of this together. Um, I can agree with Andy Moore. Uh, Andy, you're right, there is not a clear path on uh, how we should structure compensation. But what we do know for that the best and strongest organizations pay a lot of attention to their pipeline and that the compensation needs to drive the growth and the health of the pipeline. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on in the few minutes that I have. As I said, I'm not going to hit, you know, berate the point that if we need to uh, consider principles important. They are important. They are not the sil silver bullet, but they are the closest thing to it. You as the you General Assembly members have made a huge investment in education over the last several years. You've improved our teacher compensation system, and it was time to do that, and you did it. You also invested in a, um, in a program that will ultimately transform principal preparation in our state, and now you're tackling the, the big next step, which is studying principal compensation. I would say to you that you need to protect these investments because as has been said, without a great principal at the helm, every penny that you have invested in education will not be maximized. And so you need to protect those investments. To promote a robust pipeline, I'm suggesting to you that you institute a compensation system that is going to promote retention and, and it's also going to promote high performance. These are just examples uh, that I will offer to you. Number one, a well-performing base salary schedule. We've all said that, not only at this meeting, but the previous meeting that you had. And one way to structure it and link it to the teacher salary schedule would be to have a sim simple approach where uh, as you go through the pipeline, you know that when you become an assistant principal, your base salary will increase by a certain percentage. And also, when you become a principal, you know that your base salary will also increase by a certain percentage from what you were making as an assistant principal. Um, that needs to be combined with the possibility for differentiated incentive pay. We said performance obviously student growth, uh, that is, is our uh, goal in every school, that our students grow. We've also talked about uh, ways to compensate and, and differentiate for leadership roles. And then there are the situational conditions, such as a hard to staff school or a hard to staff subject. This is just an illustration of what the education pipeline looks like and what it should look like. We need to be uh, really screening prospective teachers into our profession. You really can't talk about a principal pipeline without talking about the teacher pipeline because as has been said here, we will get our best principals from the pool of best teachers. In my career, the best principals have always been 
some of the strongest teachers who also have the propensity to lead adults. So screening for who goes into the teacher teaching profession is critical. And then have applying what we know to be best practice in how you, you nurture your educational talent. You nurture them through, uh, you know, your aspiring, your aspiring teacher, you nurture them through your preparation program. You nurture that novice teacher through the teacher induction and mentoring. And then they become master teachers through the support and the development that they get. And from that, you, there are teachers that emerge as exemplars. I'm suggesting that you tie your leadership roles that you will compensate through a differentiated uh, bonus to the roles that you know will uh, improve the, the pipeline. For example, you see lead teacher, instructional technology leader. These are just examples. You see instructional coach, mentors, professional development facilitators, hard to staff eligibility. These are things that you could include in the menu of uh, items that would qualify one for a bonus. And it would also leverage your exemplars so that you would be strengthening that teacher pipeline. And then the same thing needs to happen as you continue through that career pathway for principals. From your teacher exemplars, you're going to identify some for leadership within the school. But then some, you need to identify for leadership at the, at the head of the school. Uh, your assistant principals then become your principals. So you need to very carefully screen for the teachers that are going into the principal prep programs and then aspiring principal, that's your assistant principal, um, or that, you're, that you, they go through the principal preparation program, they become assistant principals, or many of them can go straight into the principalship in these transformed programs. And then you have novice principals, in their, at least their first three years, they need a lot of support and induction through mentoring. Master principals, they get to that point with development and support, and then you have exemplar principles. And those are the ones that you want to reward through bonuses and leverage their skill to work with all of the other principles. So that is, in a nutshell, a structure that we would offer to you as a starting point for discussion on how you could actually structure a compensation system that would nurture your talent <coughs> pipeline. So return to a connected career path approach by realigning the principal and assistant principal compensation with teacher compensation. Then develop a compensation system that will promote retention and high performance and uh, with the possibility of differentiated incentive pay. And then as some others have said, phase it in if necessary. But I would offer to you that you need to do it as quickly as possible to protect the investments that you make.